Hi guys, it's Gospel here. I'm a medical doctor, a YouTuber, and also a student coach. Today I'll be talking to you about a reading strategy called spaced repetition, which is very effective. It's no longer used as medical students. We have so much to study, ranging from the terminologies for those in preclinical classes to the procedures for those in the clinical classes. So without wasting much time, let's get right into it. So what is spaced repetition? It's essentially a system of reviewing the pieces of information you've studied by creating longer durations of time in between those reviews. Now, we know that having effective study patterns is very important for medical students, ranging from patterns that would help you to recall information more, that would help you to comprehend more, and also help you remember in the long term. And that's one of the greatest advantages of the spaced repetition pattern of studying. It helps you retain information in the long term. So delving more into it, I want to talk to you about the forgetting curve, which was proposed by a man called Herman Ebbinghaus. Now he proposed that if you learn an information today, you may remember nothing about it in six days time. And the only way to beat this is to create a pattern whereby just when you're about to forget everything about that information, you quickly review it. You do so and you keep increasing the duration between each reviews up on the, onto the point that you can recall it at spinal level, irrespective of the time that you are asked. And the way spaced repetition works is this. When you decide or when you notice that this particular set of pieces of information, you're now very familiar with it, you increase the duration of time. So let's say from a day to three days to one week to a month to every three months to every year just giving you examples. But when you discover that a concept is difficult for you to understand or difficult for you to remember, you might want to do something like alternate day until you've mastered it and then you increase the gap, you increase the duration in between the reviews. This is how space repetition works. That's the pattern and that's the foundation on which it is built on. Now, an example of space repetition will be when you use flashcards. Now, flashcards work with the system of active recall very well, quite all right. But what makes flashcards very efficient, efficient is the fact that you can decide on when you want to review these cards. So you have a series of flashcards that you're now very familiar with the information. But I'll tell you the truth, in three months' time, the things you remember today from those flashcards, you may not be able to recall them in three months' time without doing effective review. So in your study plan, you're going to have a time where you're reviewing all these things periodically to make sure that the information still lies at your fingertips. So flashcard by itself is good, but just mindless review of flashcards is not very effective. Imagine reviewing something 10 times today and then you're asked tomorrow and you can't remember it. But if you had split those 10 times into maybe just twice today, two times the day after tomorrow, two times a week after, you would notice that you don't just remember the information more, you understand it better. And months down the line, if you continue increasing the duration in between reviews, you would actually be able to produce that information very, very well. So that's a good example of spaced repetition. Now, the idea I've laid the foundation is that you're increasing the duration of repeated reviews over time. Don't forget, you're increasing it over time. And for concepts that you understand more, increase the duration even more. For those that you don't understand so much, you want the time in between reviews to be less. So that's how space repetition works. Now, why is it essential? Again, coming back to the forgetting curve, the way the brain works, when you hear something today, and let's say you do not make use of it, you do not try to recall it from your memory, by tomorrow you would have forgotten it. In the next three days, you may not remember it at all. So the idea is you learn something today, you review it tomorrow. If you check on it in the next three days, the idea is that one week after, you'll still be able to record that information. If you review it a week after, three weeks after, you'll be able to record that information. And just that's how it keeps going. So at every point in time, you're increasing the duration between reviews. If you notice something is fading away from your memory, in terms of your understanding, you can actually shorten the duration in between reviews again and then increase it when you've mastered that concept all over again. Now, what are the benefits of space repetition? It's one of the very effective patterns of studying. Now, when I talk about effectiveness, this would mean all the patterns of exams, space repetition can actually help you 
do very well in all of them? Is it multiple choice question? Is it short answer questions? Is it the German subjectives? Is it full essay exams? Whichever, space repetition is going to come into play in all of them. It helps you both in terms of the quality of information you know and the quantity of information that you have. So it's very effective. Number two, it's the best when it comes to long-term memory. Active Recall helps you quite all right, but when it comes to retaining information for years, spaced repetition is the key factor that comes into play in that. If you review something every week, every week, let's say for two or three years consecutively, six, seven years down the line, I can assure you, you'll be able to remember that information at spinal level from your fingertips. So spaced repetition is very important for the single sake of long-term memory. Number three, you may be able to learn so much while just making half of the effort. So imagine having to review something today. You learn a new material tomorrow. You're trying to review that one. Review what you learned yesterday, today. You learn something else the day after tomorrow. You're learning that and you're trying to carry everything along. No, it doesn't make sense. If, to get to a point where the work will be too much that you have to do every day. So this is a reading pattern that gives you the permission to focus on what you have to do today and spill over yesterday's work or now today's work into the future at a suitable time where you can just review it. So you're carrying the entirety of your coursework along in terms of the quantity you're learning and also the efficiency of your recall system, of your review system. So space repetition, if used effectively, can actually buy you time on the long run. And the next is space repetition helps both with factual knowledge and procedural knowledge. So both for the students in preclinicals and the students in clinicals, space repetition is something you want to do, even for your clinical skills. The frequency, yes, matters. It would be nice if you can do it every day. But you know, clinical skills do not just dwell on the performance. They are actually principles behind them. So each time you want to take an arterial blood gas, each time you want to do a venipuncture, you can quickly go through the precautions you need to do, the materials you need to gather in your head. By the time you do this over and over again, you won't have to think when next you want to do that procedure. You understand? So that's how space repetition helps us, both in terms of our factual knowledge and our procedural knowledge. So that's it for space repetition. Remember, it's very important for the sake of your long-term memory. So if you're someone who years down the line, when you're preparing for your USMLE exams, the PLAB exams, whatever exams, the MCCQE exams or Canadian exams, space repetition is something you want to imbibe as a culture during your stay in school currently especially for medical students, like I said at the beginning of this video. So yes, we've come to the end of this video. If you know you enjoyed, you learned one or two things from this video, please give the video a thumbs up, share with your friends in medical school, your colleagues, and then watch the next video on the reading strategies, which you'll see right now on the right-hand side of the page. So thank you. I'll see you in the next video.